how's it going, people? Well, I'm doing better and better. Um, last week, I started to read this. I got as far as page 10. I decided to take a break. And I think I should just start over again. Because I was screwed it all up. I, too much commentary. I kept butting in and making comments. Little smart-ass remarks. And I'm supposed to just read this as a story. Without me butting in. It's a tough habit to break. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Potato vodka. Whew. Nice. Anyway, I've got uh, the bookmark all picked out. And, um... Start at chapter 1. View of the Hebrews. Chapter 1. The Destruction of Jerusalem. The land of promise was long a land of wonders. The Hebrew nation there was for many centuries the cradle of the truth and only church of God on earth. There Glorious things were wrought for her salvation. Patriarchs had there prayed, sacrificed, and praised. There, prophets had prophesied, and the Almighty had often made bare his holy arm. There, his people had too often apostatized, had been expelled from their Canaan, and again mercifully restored. There the ten tribes of Israel had renounced the house of David and their God, and were hence banished to some unknown region of the world. To the present day, while the Jews were still retained in the covenant of God, their God, manifest in the flesh, made his appearance on earth, performed his public ministry, atoned for the sins of the world, and ascended to glory. Hmm. Oh, nice. There, the first heralds of the gospel dispensation commenced their ministry, and thence the wonderful scheme of grace was propagated through the nations. Jerusalem was the capital of this earthly Canaan. Glorious things were spoken of this city of our God. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, was this Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. This, for many centuries, might be called God's capital on earth. God said, alluding primarily to the city, For the Lord hath chosen Zion to be an habitation for himself. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. Here great things were done, in divine faithfulness, which led the psalmist to say, God is known in her places for a refuge. Her. That was a quote. For lo, kings are assembled. They pass by together. They saw it. And so they marveled. They were troubled. And so they hastened away. Uh, 
the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Lots of quotes. In Salem stood his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Mount Zion. Always living on them mountaintops. Gotta stop that. There break he the arrows of the bow. The shield and the sword of battle. End quote. This city of God long answered well to its name, Jeru. They shall see Salem peace. Salem means peace. Long did the church, while they walked with God, there see and enjoy peace. Uh, all better. Okay. But alas, we find recorded in this city, temple, and nation of the Jews a fatal reverse. They found the sentiment in their sacred oracles fulfilled. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. But if ye forsake him, he will cast you off. End quote. The Jews became carnal, crucified the Lord of glory, and they fell under the denunciations of the full execution of his wrath. Their lawgiver Moses and their prophets had long thundered against them solemn denunciations <coughs> that if ever they should become of the character which they did impiously assume the most signal judgments of God should cut them off and the Messiah uttered against them in consequence of their rejecting him, a new edition of these fatal denunciations, which we find in Matthew, citation of Roman numerals, so I won't even attempt it. I'll just put it up. <sighs> and also it's in Mark and Luke. And To which the reader, if uh, if referred, there were to have a primary fulfillment in the desolation of Jerusalem and of the Jewish commonwealth. The primary fulfillment, Christ assured, should take place on that generation. And the denunciation was fulfilled. This fulfillment, inasmuch as it uh, demonstrated the truth and divinity of our Savior, exhibited a type of destruction of Antichrist and of the wicked at the end of the world and shows the danger of rejecting the Son of God ought to be duly noted in the church and frequently contemplated. It is a subject too much neglected and forgotten in the present Christian world of, what is it, 1830? No, 1825, originally published. That modern world. <sighs> 
I design that to give a concise description of the event in which Jesus Christ came in awful judgment upon the infidel Jews and vindicated his cause against his persecutors and murderers. But some preliminary remarks will be will first be made. All right, you know what? I'm going to stop at the preliminary remarks so we don't make all these run long. I'm in the middle of page two, and I will continue, but in another, in the following video. Anyway, I, I think I want to caption all this, so that's going to be a pain in the ass. So don't expect a huge output from me, but I'll try for quality instead. Stay tuned. We're going to finish chapter one eventually, or at least page two.